A lot of my talk, it's going to actually kind of mirror some of the things that are going to be spoken about today. Um, mainly, actually, that the one before, uh, where we heard that uh, she has made those uh, resources available to other people. There's no charge to just doing it. Um, that's kind of the, um, the whole idea of what I'm going to be talking about. So, uh, kudos for, the, for doing that. Um, and when I started doing this, uh, before I jump into this, uh, the conversation is it's called expert sharing. And uh, when I started pitching that, it's really about sharing experts. But when you put it as expert sharing and you say, for, I'm from elementary school, you start thinking about well, sharing your blocks really, really well and being an expert share. <laughs> so I've got to make that uh, pretty clear when we first start here. So um, This is, like I said, it's going to be about expert sharing. We're going to explore that topic a little bit. Um, so on there it says, I'm child devel development advisor as well as a housing mental health advocate for the mustard seed in Calgary. And through this, the, the concept's really simple. It started about five years ago with a conversation with other CDAs and guidance counselors about what presentations they're bringing into their schools, what presenters, how much they cost, and if they're any good, that sort of thing. And I started to make a Rolodex, and a kind of a catalog, so to speak, uh, that I can compile all these and share them with other uh, schools so they don't have to do that research every year and just make it easy. Um, and I started to take that model into the mustard seed. And working with them, I know that at the end of the summer, I'm transitioning back into the school and I'm not going to be there. So I started leaving that Rolodex there for other people to continue that, that work. And that's really the idea with expert sharing. You're, you're sharing the resources available. So this then became uh, two barriers that, that came up. Uh, one being finances. Obviously, um, different schools with different budget allocations, that sort of thing. I worked at one school, for example, that consistently, uh, from one fundraising event, one school dance, could raise almost $30,000. I worked at another school at the same time, the entire year, despite their best efforts, could barely raise $3,000. Um, so the second barrier that came up was uh, an interesting one, and it was actually kind of an upsetting one. Finding out that some schools were actually reluctant to share that information, what made them su so successful, uh, as if it was some sort of secret they needed to keep uh, because they'd be in jeopardy. So I started to do my own presentations. Uh, I, the school that didn't have eno enough money to bring in presenters, we started to get all the free ones we could, and I started to fill in the gaps where uh, we couldn't find presenters. And I started to find out other schools were doing this, and it wasn't just CDAs, it was teachers, it was even custodians and things like that were stepping up and doing these sort of things and sharing. And it really involves three types of people, the can, the can't, and the could. The people that can are the ones that have um, the ability to speak in front of other people, want to do it, and have a topic that they can speak upon um, that makes it uh, justifiable not to outsource. Um, the people that can't are missing one of those elements, but would like to coach the next group that could. The could are the ones uh, that have the, the desire and the aptitude um, and the potential to be one of the people that can, that present at other, pe other schools. And so the, they compile them in a resource and we can share with other schools. Uh, so if uh, I want to sign up and be a presenter, another school down the road can book me to come to their school if they need somebody that's, that's free and, and uh, a, a high quality. And we, in the school division, we have the people power. We have the creator of, for example, bullying.org, uh, who speaks internationally on the topic of bullying. Um, and he's actually the guy who coined the term cyberbullying in the first place. We have authors, we have ex-professional athletes and Olympians, we have people who've climbed Mount Everest, we have directors, um, we have some, some extreme uh, trauma survivors and people with incredible stories. Um, and one other person we have, we have a custodian um, who actually leads a drum circle for women's empowerment group. And uh, if you've ever been part of that sort of thing, if you've ever had a drum circle at your school or you've been part of it yourself, uh, at a school, 500 kids pounding on a drum at the same time, whether they're the cool kid, the stinky kid, the poor kid, the rich kid, the cheerleader, they're all pounding at the same time. And that's incredibly f impactful. So with the people power, I use that as my example. And I, when I was doing my research to get some quotes, uh, I found a drum circle company that gave a quote of $850 for one hour. And that's a subsidized rate because it's a school, but that's only for one grade. $850 one hour for one grade to be impacted. That's an extreme amount. So we have our, our own resources in our own backyard that we need to look at for the, to fill these sort of gaps. So we can run through how $850 at 40 schools versus if you need a $150 sub cost uh, for part of the day, and that's if, because you might have an administrator or another teacher that can cover your time. Or if you're like me, I don't need coverage, I'm free to do this stuff. So I can go to another school and that can save almost $30,000. Or if you break it down per student, you can go from two dollars, almost $2 down to 33 cents per student, it can, it can save the school division um, over $25,000. Or to the big scale, if we get 40 experts and we have 40 schools, that's 1,600 possible presentations, we can save the school division over a million dollars using expert sharing. That's not what this is about, though. 
The money thing, that's nice. That makes things really, really smooth and we don't have to stress about it. But what this is about is the actual people that we're dealing with. So the next part we've got to talk about, that's the pudding, because that's where the proof is. So the proof is in the pudding, if you've ever heard that analogy before. I never understood that when I was a kid, because it was a bizarre thing. It was about food, and I like food, I like pudding, so I, I was interested. <laughs> so I asked one of my friends, and this we were very young, uh, what does this mean? What is the proof is in the pudding? And he spoke to me very confidently. He said, well, you know, when my mom's getting my snack ready and she's getting my pudding, she brings out the sprinkles and she puts the sprinkles over top. So I always sit there rubbing my hands mischievously and say, and there's the proof when the sprinkles start coming out. And that didn't really make sense to me, but it was a cute story. So I started to go with that until I was a little bit older and I actually passed that point where I should have clued in because I, I knew that that was the way it was explained. I started to figure it out. But as cute as that story is, it, it wasn't my story. I didn't know that stuff. I had to ask somebody else. Unfortunately, if you want the real proof, we can take a child from elementary school whose maybe parents got divorced, and he doesn't want to talk to his CDA. He maybe doesn't even know what the CDA is or a guidance counselor. He doesn't want the parents to call in. We can take that kid and we bring in people into that building and just be having presentations the whole school. We can take that kid and we can teach him about how, um, through uh, l making other people laugh, he can then start to laugh. Somebody can teach him that sort of stuff. And I know expert sharing works because that's me winking at the photographer <laughs> when I was in grade two because it made her laugh. And that's when my parents were divorced. And I had no idea how to deal with it. And I didn't want to go talk to the CDA. I didn't even know if, if we had a CDA. But somebody came to our school and they spoke about that stuff. I was lucky enough to be at a school that had the budget to bring that person in. And it shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be dependent on whether we had enough money that year. It should be just because. Because there's a need for it. If we zoom next to middle school, a kid who's wondering if he has a purpose and if in his creation, if that was missed, if somebody forgot to put that in, what makes that kid special? And he starts to doubt that stuff. And you dive into that early depression. Well, I was lucky enough that I had a mentor at my school. And that mentor uh, wasn't somebody that was brought in. I was lucky enough to have somebody working in that school who saw that I had a talent and encouraged me to pursue it. Something that they didn't even teach that subject. They told me that I had a talent. And that's me on stage, touring across Canada in front of tens of thousands of people with bands like Headley. And I would never have done that. I would never even thought about taking guitar lessons or something like that unless I didn't have that person in my building. And it scares me to think, though, if I was at the school down the road, if my parents chose to live on the other side and I went to a different school and I didn't have that person there, maybe they would never have encouraged me. Maybe I would have been encouraged to go a different direction and not have had that experience. So we really should share these people. The next one, this funny-looking van. So we take a high school student, let's say, that had to run away from home or something like that or had been kicked out of their house and they're, they're bouncing around different houses and they're bouncing around different couches and that sort of stuff. And they're starting to wonder if they should wake up to go to school, let alone wake up, period, the next day. And they start to doubt all these things. And it doesn't matter if you're a great math teacher and you have that person in your building, because you need to get that kid in the building first. So I was lucky enough to have a presentation at my school that talked about being engaged in your school and how that can turn things around for you. So I'm embarrassed to say, but that is my van. <laughs> that when I was in high school, I slept out of my van. That was my house. I didn't have kids come over to play. That was my van. So through expert sharing, we can invite people into our buildings that inspire these people that, that we're missed. And I'm a CD at a school, there's 500 kids there, but I don't have any illusions that I'm the best bet for every one of those kids. We need to outsource, because there's gaps. Everywhere there's gaps. So we need to bring in these people, and we need to share. So it was because of that, I never missed one day. I never missed one class. I never missed one opportunity. I never missed one sport. I never missed one school event. And I went on, I went post-secondary, and I became the valedictorian of my graduating class. Because somebody taught me the value in that. Just like I learned math, and I know how to do math now, because somebody taught me that. Well, this sort of stuff, somebody needs to be teaching that stuff. And it's based around the Western education philosophy that we have to be available to learn. So it doesn't matter, like I said, if that kid's in your class, and he's made it to class, and what a triumph that might have been. If that kid's not there, intellectually, he's not there, he's thinking about maybe where his next meal is, or if mom and dad are going to fight. That kid's not going to learn anything. So we need to take care of that stuff. I've been lucky enough to go um, uh, across uh, to China teaching with or working with their education ministry three times um, on the Western education philosophy. Because unless you've been under a rock, um, China is quickly becoming a superpower in many different ways. Um, they're actually the number one English-speaking country in the entire world, uh, to give an example of that. Um, so working with them, uh, they've mastered the, the uh, academic side of things. They've got incredible intelligent people there. But one thing they're noticing is the dropout rate. So there they accumulate it from kindergarten all the way to grade 12, and they take the average, and they, they display that as that's what their dropout rate. And it comes to 4.5%, which is actually pretty, pretty impressive. 
But keep in mind that's kindergarten included. How many kindergarten kids do you think are dropping their crayons and saying, that's it? <laughs> I've colored in the lines. I've got it. School can't do anything more for me. This is all right. When snack time, recess, let's go. So uh, when we take that in consideration, in high school, there's some grades. 40% uh, was a dropout rate. That's not 40% of kids failing. That's 40% kids being failed. Of, of them saying, there's no value in school anymore. I've learned everything I'm going to need. I'm going to become a tradesman. I'm just going to, that's my life. That's it. Nobody's inspired them further. 40% of kids dropping out. That's almost half the kids that don't go on next year. That's incredible. So the people that do graduate, it's no wonder that most of them become engineers and doctors and that sort of stuff, because it's all that's left because the other kids get missed. So working with them in, in uh, uh, the Western education philosophy, an entire school year, they take four hours out of that entire school year to teach social-emotional wellness. In Rocky View School Division, we take at least two hours a week, and our dropout rate is 9.5%, and that's in high school, and that's incredible. And the people that we're going through there, we employ uh, um, people all over the world. The people who we graduate go to different countries. But if you're like me, you stay in Rocky View, and you want to continue that circle. I went through the school system. I stayed in the school system because somebody did a good enough job for me that I want to make sure that I'm there for somebody else. Because it shouldn't depend on what school you're at, what your opportunity is going to be like. And if we talk about standardization, that should be the only standardization that everybody is cared for. We talk about any path, any pace, any time, any place. Well, we've got we to gotta fill out every single gap. It's not just when learning can happen, it's when learning is available. So through expert sharing, we can take all these things, we can make this actually happen. So you're not a member of School A, you're a member of School Division A, and you're a part of a group, because that kid, he's going to go on to middle school, and he, he leaves your elementary, and then he's going to go to high school. And he might go to new, a different school division altogether. He might go another country. We have to take care of everybody, because we're all part of this. So I have to remove my ego, and I have to say to myself, even though I'm the CD at this school, that doesn't mean that I'm the best bet for everybody in this school. I might need to make a phone call down the road to somebody who has a better answer than I do, because that kid needs it. I might need to bring in someone else who would talk about a topic, even though I've said it a million times, maybe they need another kid or another person to come in and talk to that kid and say the exact same thing. And I have to do that, because that kid needs it. So for me, I'm kind of an abstract person. I'm kind of on the fly. The whole planning thing, I don't do so well. So coming on the fly, I can talk to kids great, and, and sometimes um, it, it works out great, but some kids, they need that structure. And I can't fill that spot. I have to call somebody else to fill that spot. And I could get away with saying, well, I'm the CD of this school. This is the way I do it. This is the way it's going to run. That's what this kid's getting. When you come to this school, if you don't like it, go to a different school. That doesn't work. Kids are going to get missed. So through expert sharing, if you want to see that this works, through people like you and even some of you actually in this building who, who taught me and were at my school, expert sharing works because you can take a person who's homeless and doubting whether they, they should go to school or even just do anything anymore. You can inspire them to become a TED Talk presenter. So thank you guys very much.